This should look pretty cool indeed. It could be cheaper, and actually your own way of having so many on tap. Epic puffage. Oh my gosh, I promised myself I wouldn't cry. Hey everyone, it's Barry here. Hope you're well. Today we're making some homemade Cocoa Pops. Yes, if you don't know, uh, Cocoa Pops by Kellogg's. Uh, in fact, if I could choose any breakfast in the world to live off forever, it would be this puffed rice chocolate coated cereal. And a lot of people don't realize that that is exactly what it is. It is puffed rice and my phone is ringing, hang on. Um, just yeah, cheers, bye. Some people, including Mrs. Barry, this is 100% legit, didn't realize that Cocoa Pops were made of rice. They just thought they were magical chocolate things. But that is exactly what it is. And as I went into the shop this morning, the price of these, three quid. And that's how many you get. 375 grams for three quid. I mean, this isn't a cheap versus steep video, but oh my word, there are cheaper versions available. They never quite cut it though, do they? So hopefully doing our own homemade ones will kind of make it a cheaper and potentially healthier alternative. I want to touch on that really briefly as well. Look at that air gap in there as well. I've mentioned this before and some people have said, yeah, but that's for storage so it doesn't dry out and it's good for it. And that has always been there. But is it just me or is that gap? Is it getting bigger? I, I swear, everything is getting smaller and more expensive. <sighs> Apart from my kids. They're getting bigger and more expensive. Remember, this is not my first rodeo. We have done homemade Rice Krispies. Holy schmoly! And indeed, homemade cornflakes. That flavour before. But if you look at the description of Cocoa Pops or other chocolate puffed rice cereal, it indeed is called that. Chocolate flavoured toasted rice. Fortified with vitamins and minerals. They're only fortified because it's kind of rice. So the actual core ingredients are minimal for these anyway. They get you with like the fibre stats. Hello? Oh, hi, Barry. It's so like I say, the ingredients, rice, sugar, syrup, so you can kind of double that up, cocoa powder, and a pinch of salt. That is pretty much it, because then it goes into all the sort of vitamins and minerals that you tend to find naturally in those ingredients. There's, none of that is really added. So like your vitamin D, your B12, and all that, it's all like in the ingredients we're putting in. This bag of rice for one kilo was one pound 20, which is almost three times the weight of this. Of course, we've got to put a few more things in that you should hopefully have around your house, but this could be not only homemade, healthy, customizable. I definitely want to shove some marshmallows in and make some more ones. It could be cheaper and actually your own way of having so many on tap. I'm really excited for this. So the first thing we need to do, we're going to toast the rice to puff it, okay? To almost basically make it a rice crispy. All right, so we have got a bowl with a sieve. I'm only gonna show you with a little bit of rice, okay? And some oil that I've warmed up. It should puff up almost immediately. You see that? Look at that. That's pretty cool, right? But you can't leave it in there for too long. So it's a little bit like popcorn. We've basically fried the rice to make it pop, okay? So that is one option. It's a little bit more frantic, a little bit more dangerous, so much faster. Instead, we're going to shove it in a pan with no oil and kind of dry fry it. Hello, is that Barry? Yeah, speaking. Leave me alone. That's actually only about 60 grams of rice, so you really do need to use um, a bigger pan. But anyhow, this is me. I mean, you don't need to use a spatula. You could just sort of shimmy it around the pan and keep it moving. This will take a little time, though. Maybe put on some headphones, listen to some Enya. I don't know if you can see, can you see it? Look, some of it's puffing. Oh my gosh! But do not stop staring like that, like what I just did. That is bad. All right, keep it going. Oh no! Look at that! I just got a load of rice everywhere. Ah, right. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Keep stirring it, Barry. Oh no. Do you know what, folks? I actually think that is burning. Look at that. This hasn't worked at all. I think I need to have a hot pan from the start, you know, and like, the, the cooking time in there needs to be hot and instant. All right, we'll try that way. Wow. So I'm just trying to show you, I'm just doing it with a small batch. Look at them moving already. That's crazy. I've only just put these in. But even with that, despite it puffing slightly, there is that risk, you see, where one or two have gone darker brown and even started to begin to burn. So we don't really want that. The way around it and to get some even more epic puffage is to drive moisture in. 
Yet by washing the starch off and cooking the rice to package instructions, the moisture will help drive in a bigger pop than that. So this is my rice cooker from the other day. Obviously you would just boil the rice to package instructions. I find it personally ironic how I'm now using my rice cooker where I've normally been making my porridge recently <laughs> to hopefully make Cocoa Pops. Cook the rice to package instructions, but that moisture is gonna get absorbed into there to really puff out later on. Whilst that's finishing off, I'm gonna get my oven warm because we need to dry it out. If you've got a dehydrator, you could bung it in that, but that'll take about eight hours. The oven, probably about two. The great thing with the rice cooker, it's just finished, but kind of like when you're cooking in a pan as well, I've turned the heat right down, or effectively it's done it for me, and that's gonna steam dry it, okay? So it's actually gonna help take as much of that moisture out as it can. If you're making it in a saucepan, maybe take it out the bottom of the saucepan, stick it in a sieve or a colander like that, put some foil on top, but I've just taken the lid off now. And this is, it's, it is dry, but it's so much more puffier. So for reference, this is an uncooked piece of rice. This is the same rice after being cooked. All of that water driven in there, which once it's dried out, will hopefully make it pop some more. So it's still warm, but it is dry. Oh my gosh. I am happy with that. It's time to dry it. So that is your standard oven. It's not a fan oven where it's gonna circulate. We're trying to dehydrate it. Like I say, dehydrator would be amazing just to get all of that moisture out before puffing it again, all right? If you do a fan oven, you're probably gonna darken it and brown it again and potentially burn it. So nice, slow, two hours-ish in there. And I've got literally a box of Cocoa Pops right there, but I'm determined, all right? We are on the way. I hope. All right, folks, so that has been actually two hours and 15 minutes. Uh, this has been out probably about 10 minutes now. And it's interesting because the texture is now almost like it was before it was cooked. It's gone quite dry and crispy and that's what you're looking for, okay? But do not touch it until it's back to room temperature. Let it cool down. All right, so this is a wok with oil. We're just gonna get a flame on and hopefully get some puffage. See that? Boom, in absolute seconds that has popped up. I'm not sure if you can see the cut on there, but they're lightly browned, okay? That is what we're after. So I'm gonna need some kitchen towel to one side because I'm gonna dump a load in one go with my sieve. A few jumped out, but, oh yes! Instant Rice Krispies. You hear that crunch? I really tried to emphasize the crunch there amazing and tastes so fresh. Effectively, skip the water and the oil, one ingredient. It has worked a charm and they're gonna get coated anyway. I'll do another batch. The bad news for me personally is that I've used up pretty much all my oil doing that. So the only oil we've got in the house is coconut oil, which I'll warm up and you can omit and replace. I was just gonna use vegetable oil. Obviously on the ingredients we talked about, there was some syrup, so we're gonna use some uh, maple syrup and of course for the cocoa element, well, good old cocoa powder, or if you want it, I guess you could melt up some chocolate. Whoa. So we've kind of got some sweetness, some chocolate, and a little bit of sort of lubricant really to uh, help toast it some more of that final push to bond the chocolate on there. But this is our coconut oil then. So I'm only putting it in a microwave bowl because the oil needs to be warmed up. If it was vegetable oil, we'd just do this cold. And most importantly, that was cocoa powder. Hopefully it's gonna transform our Rice Krispies into Cocoa Pops. Let's warm this through and give it a little stir. Oh, so rich. So I'm gonna let it cool to room temperature whilst I get my oven ready. And this time that is an oven with a fan, uh, 140 fan, so about 160C, so slightly lower than typical uh, fan because we wanna kind of slowly bake that flavor onto there. This should look pretty cool indeed. As we pour that maple cocoa and literally stir it all through to fully coat and stain every single one of those Oh my goodness. And a side note, I've just realized that I'm not making homemade cocoa pops, am I? <laughs> I'm making homemade coconut pops, but we'll go with it. And I don't know if this is how they do it in the factory. I would love, I'd love to go there and find out. And now we're just baking that chocolate flavor into them, okay? So this shouldn't take too long. Maybe around about 15 minutes and then I get to have breakfast, my own homemade Cocoa Pops from scratch at three o'clock in the afternoon. Reminds me of my teenage years. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, 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 yes. Oh, it's kind of absorbed it, but of course it's still hot. Yeah, again, I need to let it cool. And then you stick it in an airtight container. That is, of course, if it tastes any good, I think it's gonna be all right. You know, sometimes there are days when, sorry, I've just passed it for a sieve. There are days when I think to myself, I never wanna try that again. But I have really enjoyed this today. And in terms of homemade cereal, remember we did the Golden Grahams as well, or Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I think I wanna try Cheerios next. Oh my gosh. Normal milk going in. Oh my gosh, I promised myself I wouldn't cry. Mmm, that is absolutely stonking. I don't know if it's because they're slightly, like they're literally freshly made, there's a slight more crunch in there. And then you get this lovely softened middle. In fact, letting it sit in the milk, mmm, which the milk alone, it tastes so good. I think it's that freshness that we've got. It just tastes so vibrant and punchy. Of course, for me, it does have a very slight coconut vibe, but not too much at all. And like I say, I wasn't really going to use that. So you can admit that just like the maple syrup, you could just use pure sugar too as well. Mmm, I love the freshness and that punch that it gives. You can tell it's got that homemade extra effort in there. And remember, other brands are available at three quid for like 300 odd grams versus a kilo of rice you can get. Of course, things like adding the cocoa powder, which you should have around the house anyway. I was going to say most people have oil, but I don't today. <laughs> But coconut oil can be a little bit more expensive, but the maple syrup can be omitted for normal sugar as well. So it could actually be a saving with that little bit of effort, a huge bulk batch made. Awesome. What a day. Like it has literally taken me all day. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out the other cereal videos that I did before, homemade cornflakes, Rice Krispies, and the cinnamon ones. They are rather stonking and interesting. Indeed, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, share it with someone who you think might enjoy it, and of course, consider subscribing if you are not already. I've got one extra bonus scene though. We'll come on to that now. See you later. Folks, behold my air fryer. I'm not gonna put any oil in the bucket. We are gonna try and air fry some of those excess ones that we dried out earlier. I don't think this is gonna work. I mean, I hope it does. <laughs> Why am I doing this? It's been 10 minutes. The color, oh, the sound of course is good. <laughs> the color doesn't look too bad. There's a mix of sort of different lightly browns. And it has puffed slightly, but nowhere near as much as when we had it in the sieve. So it's got potential. Oh! No. Nope. Yeah, that's literally baked it. <laughs> so sadly, at first it was looking promising, but you can't air fry it. But I am over the moon with how that turned out today. See you later.